Well, um, hello everyone. Again, these reviews are gonna bleed into to November at this point. December. <laughs> or December. <laughs> Um, this is Mike Jack ninety five with another October Horror Fest movie review. Anyways, jokes aside, um Mike I am also here with my cohort Krieger who will be on screen after I give my thoughts on this film. This is probably going to be the very first time we've uh, reviewed a trilogy alone and just the idea of Horror Fest for one year. We watched this trilogy last year and we didn't really review it so we're giving it a second viewing and um, getting our thoughts out to it. So the first of these two, three movies that we're going to watch, two of them tonight and one of them tomorrow, is Hell House LLC. I don't really know what to say about this movie. Like, I don't... It's not bad. Like, not horrifically bad, because there's actually an interesting story going on. It tells a story that's interesting. The acting's a bit meh sometimes, but... At the same time, some of the long, like, recorded shots are actually look like they were done, done pretty well. Definitely corny. Um, I was like, this, I don't know what it is. Like, I mean, even when we watched the trilogy, like, last year, I just didn't really have anything to say about it. Um, if you like found footage horror movies, I'd say go watch it. <laughs> um, Michael, do you like found footage horror movies? I, I... I typically do not like found footage uh, horror movies or just found footage films in general. There may be a handful of movies that I actually enjoy. But overall, they do really set the uh, the standard for me at the lower spectrum of the uh, movie scale. So this film, I am going to have to... Uh, I think a six and a half... Is not a bad number for this movie. Because again, it has some good elements, it has some bad elements. But we're gonna have to see how it goes as we continue on to the second film. But before we get into that, it's time for the statistics and numbers with Krieger. This trilogy never hit any kind of box office, so there will be no box office numbers. At least for this first film, there's no budget known to man. Um, the only estimate that I've been able to find is extremely low. I was able to get reviews. Critics, according to Rotten Tomatoes, put this at a 7.5. An audience put this at a 7.2, so it's a highly rated film. Um, it actually got a lot of praise for being so, so low budget, but getting, getting such good quality and storytelling and... Um, they actually released a director's cut two years after it came out. They cut out a bunch of stuff for budget reasons, but this film did so well that they were able to add that back into there. I really liked the mystery in the beginning of what happened, the way they presented it in documentary style, while at the same time I didn't like the documentary style because I felt like I was watching an episode of The Office. I am dead inside. It's found footage. That automatically gets a negative. Um, I enjoyed the premise of this film. It's a unique premise that you don't really see a lot, especially with a low-budget film. Like, they're doing things that usually require a lot more effort. Um, I did, so yeah, did like the interview style. Um, I kind of felt like this was like Cloverfield a little bit, because uh, Cloverfield didn't didn't show a lot of action, but you knew it was happening. There was a lot of shaky cameras and like, oh my god, and people are running away. Um, I felt like 90% uh, of this film was either somebody talking about boring shit, bad jump scares in the background, or or uh, shaky camera. The house screams at the very beginning. They seem edited in. Like, I, somebody just Googled, hey, screaming, and then they put it in, and 
in in, in post production. The entire movie slow. Then it gets even slower, and it ends with more slow. All the characters are really uninteresting throughout most of the film. Uh, I'm really questioning how how they made any kind of profit in this year to year. If they do, this is their company. Do they do it just once a year? Do they do it all the time? How, is this their only job? What's their actual jobs? Do they take a month off every October and move to a random place? The world may never know. They apparently hacked Google at one point. That pissed me off. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, at one juncture, they say that this screenshot on Google Earth, when you go to it, shows this picture of Alex on the balcony, even before he was actually there. And then every time Google tries to change it, it just goes back to the picture. At the very end, whenever they go into the house, I'm surprised the house isn't locked. Why is it not locked? And and also, who's paying the power bill? These are the important questions that I ask myself in real life. Who's paying the power bill for an abandoned hotel that's been abandoned for years? Um, at least at least five years of this juncture. So why is there... I don't understand why there's power. Well, I guess they can hack Google. They can make infinite power for free. I really like the fact that the, the, the main dude was, was hiding suspicious shit. Like... Whenever and he got really sensitive anytime somebody was talking about the shit about the house because if he got caught he was fucked because he didn't ask for permission to come here. I really liked the gate of hell whenever it like spewed open. That was cool. Sarah's death was awesome. The the whole two C switch was cool, and the suicide was also interesting. The, 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 those last ten minutes of the film made the film higher in my opinion. It made it makes the the weight worth it sometimes. Now I have four random factoids, and uh, one of them is actually a goof that they fucked up on. At one point, um, they had a they had a timestamp on the cameras, and at the very bottom corner, um, at one point it says 2014 instead of 2019. They forgot to edit that. The scene whenever they're testing the strobe lights, and the dude sees a bunch more people than they're supposed to be there, and he freaks out, he runs out, and throws up. That was actually the actor throwing up from the from the strobe lights <laughs> he got really nauseous so that was not fake throw up this was shot in a real haunted house um called waldorf hotel i was hoping for some extra little oh this creepy stuff happened but i read nothing it just this is supposedly a haunted location as well as you guys could probably tell this film is extremely low budget so they did a lot of things to cut costs uh, one of the thing is the producer for this film uh doubled as the cameraman he did not receive credits for the cameraman though because that would be embarrassing um, and then often the uh, producer also, whenever the the clown was walking around, that there had to be somebody actually in the suit. He, the producer, was the one in the in the suit, and the guy that could do the weird eye thing. He also was the one in the suit most of the time. I'm going to give this rating a six point five. I circled that and and rated that before Mike said six point five. So this was not predetermined. Mike's just copying me. Both of our ratings are below what the critics and audience rate it. I, I say, like, I know I didn't really say much about the movie. It's really just because, like, I... You love it. No, it's, if it feels like a run-of-the-mill run paranormal, like, found footage movie. It's unique to me. I mean, it's unique, but it's also run-of-the-mill at the same time. It's weird. Like... That's why whenever we watched it the first time, I was like, yeah, let's buy this, uh, the third one. We have to see this. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting premise. It is a good premise, yes. I just don't think that they deliver. Yeah, and I just... In this one. This one, it just, it's, it, it's... The last ten minutes were good. It's like a lot of found footage films. The last ten minutes were good. Mm-hmm. I can't say the same for the rest of the I mean, a lot of the bull, the bull hawkery that we don't like is their way of trying to get the viewer to like the characters more and sometimes it's just like people don't people don't naturally act like this okay <laughs> guess this movie post-apocalyptic set in the future with will smith can't guess the movie i am legend you mean i robot anyways um <laughs> Also, realistically, there were several times when they saw this a clown or a doll or something move, and then they just kept like, well, let's keep walking by. I would have kicked that motherfucker down. I wouldn't like pat him on his head. I would have kicked him to the ground. I'm like, oh, wow, you're a thing that can move. 
fucking Spartan kick that bitch. There's a lot, and if I saw a bunch of people in robes, I'd be like, oh no, it'd probably get me killed, but I'd run up and punch that motherfucker. You know how the bullets shoot in the first Resident Evil? That, that's how they would be flying back. So, um, we will be continuing on this video in about four seconds after this brief ad by Mike Check Production. See you next time on failed uh, d d success story black. <laughs> Why? You make all my intros and outros. So <laughs> <laughs>